How's it going, people? Liberal Hill back with another wrestling review. Um, look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Did not know that Bomb Glory was this past Sunday. Pretty much just coasted by it. Didn't even notice it until like I was just going through my Twitter timeline. I was like, oh, Bomb Glory. Oh, that must be the prelude for Glory. Okay, okay, whatever. Then I was like, okay, well, hold, hold, hold. Tessa Blanchard ladder. She was supposed to have a ladder match at Bound for Glory. Oh, Bound for Glory's now. It's going on now, and it's already gone. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I, I wasn't too happy about that. Anyway, the overall show, a mixed bag. Like, like, like I keep saying this about Impact. Good shows. No, no... I need that. I need that fix, that adrenaline, and for the most part, it was half and half on this show. Um, first part, I'm just gonna get straight into it. First uh, thing they show was the Call Your Shot Battle Royal. Last two participants, last two wrestlers, they have a one, two, three regular match. So you had 20 people enter. Uh, first person was Eddie Edwards. Last person was Mahabali Shera with uh, people like Joey Ryan, Havoc, Rosemary, um, Kira Hogan. Just like a whole hodgepodge of Tommy Dreamer. You got to throw Tommy Dreamer in there some effing where. Um, overall, oh yeah, you had the debut of Kylie Ray. Uh, I've seen a little bit of her in. Uh, uh, what was it? Booger T's promotion. Pretty, you know, pretty good wrestler. Pretty funny. Uh, you know, I do like her dynamic of being this, you know, sort of really nice wrestler with, you know, nice personality. But when the match gets going, she just turns on it like a dime. So that's going to be interesting to see where they take her character and how they use her character. Uh, Joey Ryan on a major promotion uh, on television. How are they going to use this guy? Like, I was like, okay, they're probably going to tone her down with Havoc and Rosemary in the ring, and they're fighting it out. And Joey Ryan just takes the oil and starts rubbing on his chest and putting it on his dick. Like, both of y'all, touch it. Just, just touch it. Um, like, where was, are they going to be going with Joey Ryan? That's, I hope, hopefully, it's better than his last run in TNA. Let, let's be honest. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah. Eddie Edwards ends up winning the match. He defeats Maha Bli Shira. Um, I, I, I miss all this because of what happens throughout the rest of the show. So, before I get into my thoughts on that, let's just go ahead and run out the rest of the show. Um, all right. Make sure this is on. All right, yeah. Next match was Taya Valkyrie versus uh, Tanil Dashwood. Good match, women's match. Uh, personally, I wasn't expecting Taya to pull out the victory because uh, her husband is signed to WWE. And I thought, you know, she would just go with him or whatever. But it's nice to see that she's going to be staying card on her own path or whatever. Like I said, it was a pretty pretty good match. Uh, Ty is just a, a complete package as far as a wrestler. Uh, good in-ring wrestling, good talking, a character. Um, and, you know, shout out to Impact for not just throwing the title willy-nilly onto Neil Dashwood uh, when she's just gotten there. Um, uh, how did she win? Oh, yeah, yeah. There was a change. Bravo throwing the chain to Ty up. The chain gets lost in the shuffle. Uh, Tanil pistol the chain, then she drops it, and that allows for Taya to hit a couple of moves and then get into Roll to Valhalla, winning the match. So, overall, not really that bad. Mm -hmm. Moving on past that. 
up. You had the triple threat for the tag team titles. You have the North defending against Rhino, RVD, and Swan and Willie Mack. It was nice to see that Swan and Mack have incorporated more tag team moves into that row. So like they're going to stick as a tag team. That's nice. But the big story coming out of this match is the fact that RVD finally turned heel. And the way he turned heel, I don't think I've ever seen it before. Like, you know, the kick and everything. But I'm talking about RVD's face. The, the point where you knew, like, he was going to turn heel. Like, so he's in one corner of the ring. And he's about to hit the five-star frog splash on, I think it was Ethan Page or Josh, either, either one. But either way, he gets uh, shut down by either Swan or Ethan Page or Josh. It, it, he got shut down by one of those three guys. And on the other side of the ring, here comes Willie Mack. And Willie Mack hits the Rob Van Dam. And RVD just completely shut down. He's like, I'm, it's a face I've never seen Rob do in like all the years I watched him, like from ECW to now. I've never seen him hit that face. That face was just like, bro, some shit's about to go down. He was just, and, and then when Willie hit the uh, the frog splash, he sat on the rope was like, bro, I can't quit. Really? Like it went from disbelief. Anger, surprise, it was all those emotions in RVD's face at one time. That's just amazing. Anyway, go on further into the match. You think RVD and Rhino, they're about to win or hit some kind of big move. RVD turns on Rhino, kicks his head off, knocks him out of the ring. Then he also attacks Mac and Swan and whatever. Uh, then he um, gets out of the ring, the crowd's Get back, get back, get back. Fight over there, fight over there, fight over there. Um, yeah, and the crowd's bull Why are you guys coming over here? Stop coming over here with that bullshit. Stop coming here with that bullshit. Get over there. Uh, anyway, do the cat into a soap. Don't, don't worry about that. Uh, anyway, yeah, anyway, the crowd's going him, RBD, you know. Bad guy. And then Swan's left alone. By the way, Swan is selling. I think that was the point of the match where uh, Ethan Page him with a backdrop. And he just turned the backdrop into a 450 splash, like an overkill of a sell. And, and, anyway, the North hit him with, I don't, what, what do they call it? The fall from the North? Fall from the Northern Wall? But I, I guess they're the North. Game of Thrones, the North Wall. Is, is it the North Wall? Yeah, let's go with that. The fall from the northern wall. Fall from the north. Fall from the north. Fall of the fall. It can't be fall of the north because they're not falling. Fall from the north. Fall from the. You guys figure it out. Anyway, the north retain. Good, you know, good wrestling tag team match. Uh, all right. Next up, the all right, tag team match, tag team match, tag team match. Oh, you had Michael Elgin versus Mara Fuji, and this match was look, it was slow. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, it was slow to get off, but once it got going, holy hell, these guys were playing in some thick shots. Um, yeah, this, this is one of the matches you really can't describe. This is one of the matches you would have to just see because you had a lot of L. You had the strong style, the power, the technical. Uh, and then the ending. You have uh, Mera Fuji kicking out of the Elgin Bomb like once, and then um, eventually does get, get taken down. By the Elgin Bomb, but just seeing that for the first time is, you know, it, it, I like that they did that to pretty much, to pretty much, uh, to pretty much put some put some respect on Mara Fuji's legacy. Legacy. Uh, sorry, that dog. 
And I'm looking at the replay right now. Oh, yeah. He wins with the burning hammer. Huh. That's... Michael Elgin winning with the burning hammer instead of the Elgin bomb. I got to see it a little bit more because I'm so used to him hitting the Elgin bomb. It is it's just kind of weird. It's a weird feeling right now. Uh, then next you had the five-way ladder match with Tessa, Ace Austin, AC Romero, uh, El Jefe Daga and the reigning champ, the Golden Draw, uh, Jake, Jake Chris. Uh, or, you know, as far as the ladder match goes, this this was pretty good. Uh, a lot of good spots in here. Uh, the, I know the one that everybody's gonna be everybody's talking about right now is when Tessa Blanchard pushed uh, AC. Off of the ladder, he just went splat through the table. Uh, see what was some other stuff. It, it was just a fun train wreck match. This is one of another one of the matches where uh, you we would have to see it. It, it was it was good. Uh, so the end came with Tessa going up to uh, get the title. Out comes the rest of OBE, uh, J, uh, Dave. Madman Fulton, uh, Tessa takes out both of them eventually. Uh, she climbs the ladder. Jake Chris climbs up on the other side. She knocks him out. He falls into the table. And you're thinking, oh, oh it's the first woman to win the X Division title, Tessa Blanchard. Let's go. Let's go. Ace Austin comes complete, look completely out of nowhere. I know, I know that's an overused phrase. But he comes completely out of nowhere and hits Tessa Blanchard right across the eyes with that um, gambit-like stick, and she just falls like a ton of brick. Ace Austin, your new X Division champion. I know a lot of people pissed. I was semi pissed, but I kind of know where they're going. I, and look, look, let's get to the rest of the show. Then you had. Alright, moving past that. Ladder, ladder, ladder. Oh, Moose versus Ken Shamrock. Um, This was interesting. And the fact that. This more wasn't a wrestling match. This more of a spectacle, cheating, mooses, a dirty SOB type of match. Um, Ken Shamrock for 55 years old. Look, I know people want to say, like, look, Ken Shamrock doesn't belong in the ring. Uh, it's it's mandatory because it wasn't like three to fly to be that like several rounds. Blah, blah, blah. For a guy that, does, look, let, let, we got to put perspective in here. For a guy that, doesn't wrestle frequently. Like he isn't on the road. He's he's he retired. He's done. He like like you nervous typing in the comment section about how the match. So he doesn't care. He's a legend. He's he cemented his place in legacy. He's a he's he he's a UFC Hall of Famer. Back when it was bare knuckles. Back before safety and weight limits and all the other crap. He was knocking out guys twice his size. Oh, you don't have any credentials? You get a knockout. You got credentials, you get a knockout. So, you crying about this match not being up to standards. Nobody cares. Nobody cares, especially when you're talking about a guy, like I said, who doesn't wrestle frequently, who came out of retirement or, you know, whatever. Just whatever. For this match. For, and putting that all into perspective. Kishaw put on a pretty decent match. Um, did he almost break his neck or hurt himself going for a dive? Absolutely. Uh, was his ground wrestling solid? Absolutely. Was his suplex immaculate? Yes, it was. Uh, was his locking of the ankle lock? Did it look legit? Yes, yes. Um, his Hulakrana, standing Hulakrana, by, by the way, on the guy like the side of the moves, like. Really? Like, it, it, that's athletic. And also, Ken Shamrock, you know, no homo, 
really good shape, you know, in shape with all the stuff right here. So props to him for that. Could have just let himself go because he's a legend. I mean, he doesn't really have to, you know, he can just, whatever. Anyway, so Moose for the rest of this match was pretty much using Frank Tig to cheat for him, cheating himself. Uh, and that's pretty much it while Ken Shamrock was trying to play a regular wrestling match. Uh, Ken Shamrock goes for like a fourth ankle lock. Moose uh, flips him into the exposed turnbuckle, hits the a no jackhammer knee spear. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, then you have the main event. Ah. I meant something. Brian Cage retains, but the way he retains, first of all, great match. Great, great match. A lot of good stuff here. High spots, hardcore. Uh, what am I doing now? But um, hardcore, all, all those spots. And then the end. Wait, wait a second. Uh, just a second. Okay, one, one second, 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 one second. Chill, chill, just chill. Um, do it. Stop, stop, just stop, just stop, just stop. One second. Can you give me a second? Thank you. Go over there, please. Thank you. There, I'll be over there in a second with you. Over there, go over there. Go over there. I'll be with you in a second. Please. Please, I'll be I'll be over there in a second. Anyway. So so yeah, the match ends with Sammy Callahan pulling out a bag of tacks. He hits the cactus special on on um, on Brian Sh on Brian Shamrock <laughs> Brian K whoa on Brian Cade and Brian Cade pops up at one. So okay, I was just sitting back and all of a sudden that happens and I mark out. I'm not gonna lie to you because that was a cool spot. You know nobody's. I think everybody, anybody's kicked out of that cat, especially, especially like dumb tax. Um, he pops up at one, uh, hits a series of moves, and I think you know, he hits the drill claw on Sammy Callahan uh, into the tax and retains the title. So I'm split on that because, first of all, I wanted Sammy Callahan to win because it's time for him to have that title around his waist. But the way they made the match, I can't be mad at that. I mean, that's how you make somebody look really strong. I mean, uh, getting power drivers and thumbtack, you just pop up and destroy the guy. I mean, it, it doesn't get any better than that. Um, so, rewind all that. All the stuff that happened, you have Ace Austin winning has been tied. Then you have Eddie Edwards winning the Call Your Shot gauntlet. And it all, go, it all starts with Eddie because now you have this done. Where does Eddie go with this? I mean, and how long is the contract? How long can he, you know, hold it out? Will he go for the Edmund title and, you know, defeat the guy that may be banging his wife? Does he go for the world title and become a two-time World Heavyweight Champion against Brian Cage? But hold up. I just saw a segment on YouTube where this week it will be Brian Cage Versus Sammy Callahan for the world title. And how that came about is that Sammy Callahan, and being a cult leader he is, has surrounded uh, Brian Cage's house and forced Brian Cage to give him a title shot. So, Impact, where are you going with this? So, I just throw a conspiracy theory here. Just, you know, something. So, Eddie could go to the traditional route and you know, fight for the Isman title, hold it on. Or he could go for a world title. But where do you go? I mean, if you go Callahan versus Eddie, redemption story, 
No, I, I think we've seen that too much. We, we've seen that. But then again, Sammy needs that belt. So if you have him lose that rematch, it, it pretty much destroys Sammy Callahan as a character. I mean, you've already have you already, you've already had him lose some pretty big matches. I think uh, the only match he's won is against Cage in a, in a six on six te against Tessa Blanchard. Um, I think against Eddie Edwards and uh, in the six, uh, another six way. I think I'm not sure, uh, but I'm, I'm talking about all pay per view. Yeah. So. It's, it's kind of getting to that point where you need to have it on, but you could also go through the block, but th this would be tricky. This would be the trickiest thing. You would have to have Cage beat Sammy and then at the pay-per-view have have uh, Eddie somehow get Callahan into the uh, match, a, a three-way, if you will. Um, and all of a sudden, you could have Eddie turn on Cage or just help help Sammy and become a, a, a person of Sammy Callahan's cult. Because look, I, I know I'm throwing out this wild re, you know, Republican-type conspiracy theory that has no basis in the writing team or whatever. I'm just, you know, thinking... Uh, Eddie has, now he has his hair growing out just like Sammy, but he has the plaits to grow it, you know, quick or whatever. He's turning into Sammy Callahan right before your eye. He's turning into the man that turned him into the lunatic, the lunatic we see today. And what better homage to Sammy than would it be for him to help Sammy gain the world title. Now, this would have to be a long scratch because I don't know when the next pay I think it's like Slammiversary and isn't that like, hold on, let me, let me just check this real quick. I think it's hard to kill. Just make sure. Be January. All right, so. So. It's October going into November now. So can they scratch if they, if they wanted to? November, Dece November, December, January. So that's basically like almost three months. No, three. Yeah, like three. You have it. You have it. It's almost like three months worth of store they would have to scratch out. To get to that point, the thing is, would they be willing to do that? Um, you know, just give me your opinion. I, I, I gotta go give this dog like a midnight snack. You know, just something smart, small across the street. Shit. Anyway, uh, bye. See you guys later. Don't bite me. Stop it. Thank you. Anyway, catch you guys later. Peace out. If I stop. All right, catch you guys later. Peace.